Inside the topic of common fractions, we are going to focus on cubes and cube roots of common fractions. Important to take note of is a negative fraction cubed always give a negative answer. The reason is cube means to the power 3. So if we have a negative, we know a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. So this is if you square the negative, you get a positive. But now a cube is three times that same or that same uh, value that we need to multiply. So now we already multiply twice to obtain the ans positive answer. We have to multiply by a neg another negative and we will obtain a negative answer. The same will happen for a cube root. So now we need to find three pairs um, that are the same. So if we have three negatives, three pairs, exactly same negative pairs for a cube root, we know the answer will be one of those pairs, which will be negative whatever its value is. So therefore, a, the cube root of a negative fraction is always negative. So we have seen in the previous lesson that for a square, if we have a negative number squared, it will always be positive. We also seen that um, we cannot determine at school level the square root of a negative number. We can only determine the square root of positive numbers. So let's use exercise 13.9 to illustrate how to deal firstly with cubes and then next we will use it to illustrate how to deal with cube roots. So number one, we have one six to the power three. Basically everything we know about squares in terms of principles use, we can follow the same logic for cubes. So we know 2 to the power of 3 means simply take this 1, 6 and multiply it by itself 3 times. So one way of looking at it is like this. Take the 1, 6, multiply it by itself 3 times. We can multiply tops. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. We can multiply bottom. 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times 6, 6 times 6 is again 36, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3 is 21. So it's the same as 1 over 2, 1, 6. Or we can use the same rules that we use for squares. Uh, we said when we have a fraction that we or squaring, we can square the separate parts. We can have the divorce or the separation. We can do the same with cubes. So it's the same as saying it's 1 to the power 3 over 6 to the power 3. And now we have whole numbers that we are cubing. 2 to the power 3 means multiply by itself 3 times. So 1 times 1 is 1 times another 1 is 1. 6 to the 3 is 6 times 6 times 6, which we already determined is 216. So now for number 2, I'm going to give you a bit of time to try this. The one hint is we are working with a mix fraction. So what do we do 99% of the time when we see a mixed fraction? What's our strategy? You bet we 
change it in an improper fraction. So that's my first tip to you. Now, once you change it in an improper fraction, the next hint would be separate, separate the top and the bottoms and take each one to the power of 3. The top to the power of 3 and the bottom portion to the power of 3. Or to state it differently, the numerator to the power of 3 and the denominator also to the power of 3. Okay, so let's see. Let's first change this into an uh, improper fraction. What's the strategy? Take the whole number, multiply it by the bottom number or the denominator, add the top part or the numerator, keep the bottom number or the denominator, take all of this to the power 3. So now we have 2 times 7, which is 14, plus 1. So we have 15 over 7 to the power 3, or cubed. And now we can use the rule that say we are allowed to separate. So we have 15 to the power 3 over 7 to the power 3. So we need to find what's 15 times 15 times 15. And we also need to find what is 7 times 7 times 7. Okay, so 15 is the same as 5 times 3. Sometimes I like to just make it easier. So if I have to multiply 15 by 15, it's the same as actually multiplying 15 by 5. 5 times 5 is 25, 1 times 5 is 5, plus the 2 is 7, but I still have to multiply by 3, 5 times 3 is 15, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 1 is 2 to 5, so 15 times 15 is 2 to 5, we have to multiply by another 15, which to make it easy for me working with simple digits, I can just make it 5 times 3 again, because 15 is 5 times 3. I'm just showing some other tricks. 5 times 5 is 25. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. So we actually have at the top 1, 1, 2, 5. We have to multiply 7 by 7, which we know is 49. Multiply by another 7. 9 times 7 is 63. 4 times 7, 28 plus 6, 3, 4, 3. Okay, so... Now we can see how many times it's possible for 343 three to go into 1125 as it's an improper fraction. <coughs> so it's not simplified. So let's see how many times does 343 three go into 1125. Let's see how many times 3 goes. 
3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 3 is 12, 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1, 1029. So it seems to me 3 will work. What's the difference between 1029 and 1125? Well, if we added the 100 to 1029, we will get 1,129, but that would be 4 more than what we require. So 100 minus 4 is 96. So it seems it's 3 and 96 over 3, 4, 3. Okay, so now that we have dealt with cubes, let's deal with cube roots. So, number four, I see firstly we have a mixed fraction. What do we do with a mixed fraction? Most of the time the strategies, strategies change into an improper fraction. So, we have three times eight is 24 plus the top three. 27 over the bottom one which is 8. After we have done a few of these you don't necessarily have to put the whole step explicitly. You get to a stage where you can skip that step. You did do it mentally in, in your mind. So we have now the cube root and just as we did with normal root, square roots Cube roots we can also split or separate, so we can say it's the cube root of 27 over the cube root of 8. Since it's a cube root, we need three sums, three of the same. So what times what times what gives 27? Mm, I think. Let's see, what's 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27, so that will work. What about 8? 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8. So 2 times 2 times 2 will work. And now... We keep one of the three sum. So we have at the top a three without the cube root. At the bottom, we have a two without the cube root. And this is an improper fraction. How many times is two going to three? Yes, once. What's the remainder? We have two. We need to get to three. We need still one. What do we have at the bottom? A 2. We always keep the bottom the same or the denominator. So it's one and a half as our final answer. So it's now your opportunity to try number 5 on your own. The int is separate the top and the bottom and take the cube root of each Next in the minus, you can take it either as part of the top or as part of the bottom, any one of the two, but not both. Then you are looking for three of the same to give the top, three of the same to give the bottom, so it's three sums. I 
and then the final hint is you take one of each of the three sims and simplify if needed. Okay, so let's see, we separate. I'm going to take the minus to the top. So I'm going to say I have the cube root of negative 27 over the cube root of 512. I have separated, we add the divorce. Now I'm looking for three sims. So what times what times what gives negative 27? Well, from here we know that 3 will work, but now we have a negative, so in this case, negative 3, in fact, will work. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Positive 9 times negative 3 will result in negative 27. So what will work for 5, 1, 2? I wonder what, what 6 times 6 is 36, what's 36 times 6, 6 times 6 is 36, 6 times 3 is 18, 2, 1, 6, that won't work, I think 7 will work, 7 times 7 is 49, 49 times 7, 9 times 7 is 63, 7 times 4 is 28, plus 6, no, so let's try 8. 8 times 8 is 64. 64 times 8. 8 times 4 is 32. 6 times 8 is 48. Yep, that will work. So 8 times 8 times 8. Cube root. We keep one of each three sum. So we have a negative 3 at the top. We have 8 at the bottom. It's a proper fraction. I can't see anything that go into 3 as well as 8. So this is the final answer.